Hey folks, welcome back to Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. We're here in Aldia's Keep. It's kind of a rundown manor that was once home and kind of still is home to all sorts of unethical experiments. Experiments that probably have something to do with dragons, based on the dragon skeleton and the petrified dragon bones and dragon acolytes and just, you know, all that. In the last episode, we entered into the keep, or manor, uh, went through the yard, went through kind of the foyer entryway. This episode, we're heading into the lab, which is where the creations hang out. Literally. Let's put some light on the subject here. Now, the actual, like, core path of Aldia's Keep is really straightforward. It's this hallway, basically, uh, and a couple more rooms at the end that are all lined up one after another. Uh, but there are some side rooms, some side expeditions that uh, you can go on, and I might recommend doing. Now, if you look up... All these cages you'll occasionally see some creatures imprisoned uh, up there we can see we've got a mimic he's not gonna do anything we can just kind of leave him there uh, then we got some paintings and these dragon acolytes this is what they do they like to hide behind the paintings uh, which is got to be boring for them right don't know how to get to that message to read it maybe it's just gotta jump good but oh well so we've got one of these kind of poison mushroom beetle things. We've run into these a couple places. Uh, I remember the really big one in Shrine of Amana, which I think this is the same size. Don't know if it's related or not, honestly. Um, we've got some ogres as well. Ogres kind of all over the place. Some in cages, some... Uh, one greeted us, basically, into the keep. Um, so... Ogres abound. So now up here we have this thing. Um, I think they call it an undead aberration, um, which is two different creature classes in D and D. Uh, so playing a little fast and loose with the rules there from. Um, and so this is something that I think is actually more interesting in the original. Dark Souls 2 release non-scholar, which for the most part I think is unusual. Um, but in the original Dark Souls 2, we would have seen these before, specifically in the uh, Sinner's Rise, the area leading up to the Lost Sinner. Um, and in in Scholar, it was a second flexile century. And so I feel like taking out that connection um, loses something. You know, there's this implication that this is an undead experiment uh, from the folks of Aldia, and that creates a connection to Sinner's Rise, um, that they were using these experiments to do the thing over at Sinner's Rise. Uh, and I think, you know, there's also an implication that the Flexile Century is likewise probably an experiment of Aldia. Um, but there's a certain, like, pitiable quality to these, uh, these things um, that the Flexile Century doesn't really have. Um, and I think New Game Plus in Scholar actually does bring these into Sinner's Rise, which uh, I don't know why they didn't just keep them in the, in the New Game version, but whatever um but yeah these things i think largely pitiable creatures you know they're clearly suffering they're alone um but it hits harder if they've been alone in a a lost seaside tower in the dark for all eternity i don't know so this room brings us to probably the labbiest part of the lab. Um, it's got these kind of glowing lemon-lime vials of liquid, which you know means science. Um, 
Ferris Lockstone, if you need any more, I guess. Um, the real thing of interest is down these stairs. So down here, you'll find a pit of corrosive acid. Uh, and a couple of dogs just kind of chilling out, hanging out in the acid like like you do. Um, so I want to try something here. Uh, you might note that the the bars on this cage, because it is a cage, are spiked, um, which would be unpleasant to touch, I gotta say. Uh, so I'm gonna see if I can lure those dogs over with an alluring skull, um, and it doesn't look like it. They uh, do not seem interested. Oh well, plan B. So because this is, uh, you know, a pit of corrosive acid, you probably don't want to wade in there uh, on your feet. Uh, you're probably gonna want to hit these things with ranged weaponry, um, at least until they aggro and charge you. Oh, yeah. Downside of the Avalon, you you waste uh, three crossbow bolts every time you miss. Um, come on, guys, get over here. Let's let's try something else. So, I am using the Avalon. Um, I think I mentioned last episode that I swapped out my heavy crossbow for an Avalon. Um, and so, a couple things to note about the Avalon. Um, one, it is super cool. It's just, it kicks ass. It's so cool. Um, it's incredibly dope. Um, I believe it is basically the strongest crossbow in the game, uh, but the, the numbers on the screen are a little bit misleading. Um, because, as you've seen, it fires three shots right in a row. Uh, like a coconut gun, it fires in spurts. And uh, the, that means it does eat up a lot of ammo. Um, but when you look at the uh, stat screen for the Avalon, uh, the, the number that it shows for the amount of damage uh, is the number per bolt. Um, so it fires three bolts. And so this the number that you're seeing on the screen right now... Um, is, is actually, you know, like a third of the damage that it actually does on a hit. Which is cool as hell. Alright, we want to get items, which means we're going to need to uh, take off some equipment. Uh, including our rings. Don't forget the rings. All right, the most uh, interesting or notable item there, uh, in terms of lore anyway, is uh, that spell we just picked up, Soul Geyser. This blasphemous spell is a family heirloom of Lord Aldia's. It was designed to pummel foes until its power is entirely exhausted. Uh, so I've been dancing around a little something here, which is that uh, Aldia refers not just to this estate, to this keep, uh, but also to a specific person, the lord of this area, Lord Aldia. Uh, so different item descriptions will refer to like the town of Aldia uh, versus the person Aldia. It's just a thing, a distinction to keep in mind. Uh, also worth noting, this is a family heirloom of Lord Aldius. We don't know who Aldius' family is yet, but just keep that in mind, because we will find out. Alrighty. Uh, so on our way out here, one thing that I always forget, uh, there's a fake wall here. And behind it, a bonfire. Um, all these keep, in general, not a super difficult or long area, um, nor one that requires a lot of extensive navigation. It is nice to have a slightly shorter walk to the boss. 
Anyway, let's continue. Uh, over here, you'll see that it is locked. Now pay close attention to the text here. It says, it's locked. Now let's compare that to, by the way, nothing back there. Uh, compare it to this door over here, which says, locked. Two different messages. Uh, here's an unintuitive thing. If, if a door says, it's locked, you need a key. If it just says, locked, you need to do something else to open it up. Not very intuitive, but either way, we can't get in. Uh, also, this poor person uh, is another player who got petrified by Basilisk. All right, so we're almost to the end of the hallway here. We've got a Cyclops hiding behind that door, ready to say hello. Uh, before we do that, though, we do have one more room to clear out here. Oh, we'll track an Acolyte. They're just minding their own business. The Bone Shield. Let's see what that's about. Looks like a Dragon Skull, right? Shield used by Aldean Acolytes. Crafted from the skull of some creature that outlived its usefulness for experimentation. The peculiar figure, known as Lord Aldea, kept giants in his manor, attempted to recreate a dragon, but after some time, was not heard from again. So, kind of a huge lore bomb right there, right? Uh, we walk into this room, and if you were paying close attention, you might have seen the decor. This is a pile of giants. Uh, and we just got kind of the follow-up to that image, which is the revelation that Aldia was trying to recreate a dragon, presumably using the, the giants somehow. Which, wild, right? So all the dragon bones, the giant dragon skeleton out, out in the entryway, dragon acolytes, all that was for the sake of recreating a dragon. Now, where did he get these giants? Well, presumably from the war. The war against the giants that came from across the sea. Prisoners of war used in experimentation. Now, how does he have connections like that to get those prisoners? Well, stay tuned. And this is just such a great, like, disgusting, but also really powerful image of all these giants piled on top of one another, indistinguishable from each other in this mass of flesh, uh, blood and bits dripping down into a pit of corrosive acid, and anything that doesn't get dissolved gets eaten by those dogs down below. It's sick. It's so cool. So we did kind of just get that revelation a little bit earlier than I expected to, but uh, that's okay. All right, so we got to deal with this guy. Uh, and here's the thing. Here's the tricky thing where things get complicated. If you want to just progress through this area, you can do that. No problem. Um, but if you want to open up this door, you got to do a little bit, a little bit more. Um, so here's the deal. Um, as you may know, ogres are pretty good at breaking things. That guy's gonna, he's gonna break through that, uh, that door, and he can break a whole lot of other things too. He can break that, uh, carriage, which I think lets loose a basilisk, which that's not great. Uh, he can break cages, uh, or at least cages that are low to the ground, including this one here. Um, so kind of don't want to deal with two of these Cyclops ogres at once. Um... He can also break open and swallow, and that's in fact how you get in. Um, so if you want to get in and, and get the prizes uh, behind the locked door, you're going to need a Cyclops on your side. 
but there's no way to get the Cyclops from the uh, from the door over there over to the locked door without breaking this guy's cage. Um, so if you're doing like reckless death runs, you can you can YOLO this. You know you can uh, have the guy bust in have the guy charge through, just run over and let one of them bust their butt through the wall and then die and then come back and it's fine. Um, that's totally valid. Uh, but I'm trying to do this without having any deaths on screen, so I'm going to have to do something a little bit more convoluted. Um, and it's entirely possible this is more convoluted than it needs to be. Uh, it's entirely possible that I'm overthinking this. I 100% believe it. Um, but... What I'm going to try to do uh, is is bring this door guy down to very, very low health, um, then have him break the caged guy, kill the door guy, and then let the cage guy break open the locked door. Let's see how it goes. I mean, what I can do is actually snipe him from in here. Nope, actually, no, I can't do that. Oh, God, now I'm in the... Oh, God. That... That didn't... That was a trap. That's what that was. That was, uh, that was a trap that the game designers laid for me, and I fell literally right into it. Okay. Cool. Fun. Um, I can still salvage this. This will still work. <laughs> we can do this. What's, uh, what's going on out here? Okay, it's over there. Doesn't seem to know where I am. Maybe I could snipe him from over here. It'll sort of work, maybe. I don't want to. I don't want to break the carriage though. That would be bad. Oh, here he comes. All right. Well, my plan basically failed. Great. Break the wall. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Nope, maybe. Oh. Oh, I died. Well. So, I said I don't like to show deaths on screen, but, uh... You know, I already broke that streak in Taurus of Pharos with the big rat boss, and I got really lucky with that bone shield drop. I don't want to have to re-record and not get that drop. So let's uh, let's model a strategy that you might use in your own playthrough. Okay, let's get this boy over here and grab our souls. Come on over, buddy. There we go. And I only got the one guy aggroed, which will make this a lot easier. The malformed shell. Let's check that out. One of the malformed weapons developed in Aldia swung like a great hammer. Appears to be a fragment of a giant shell, but its precise origins are unknown. The peculiar figure, known as Lord Aldia, attempted to uncover the secrets of life itself and viewed the undead as a key to this mystery. So, now we kind of know two things. One, uh, that he's trying to recreate dragons using giants somehow, and he's also looking to uncover the secrets of life itself. And I think those are connected because, as you'll recall from Dark Souls 1, uh, dragons are everlasting. They are immortal. So it sounds to me like Aldi is trying to unlock the secrets of life and death by way of dragons and undead. Sounds to me like he's working on the undead curse. Alrighty, let's snipe this basilisk here. Simple enough. 
All right. And now our Cyclops friend. I don't want to lure him too far over, otherwise he might break open uh, some more enemies, which not not ideal. Um, I am playing a little bit safe here. Um, at least I, I kind of have to be because I know from trial and error and previous recordings uh, they can actually one shot me if they if they grab me and shot me um, so I just playing a little bit safe don't want to have to redo even more All right, we got this door over here that is also locked. I believe it links up to the other locked door that we addressed a little bit earlier. And we've got big doors here. What a nice, calm, unassuming room. Clearly, nothing suspect will happen. Dynamic entry. So yeah, that's that is super rude. Uh, it's incredibly rude. I don't know if it's good game design. It is hilarious. I I you know I don't know how you're supposed to see that coming, other than the fact that it's quiet too quiet. Uh, but that is just so funny. All right, that wraps up the uh, mandatory portion of Aldea's Keep. Uh, now there is one other thing that I wanna do here in the keep before we fight the boss. Um, there's still that locked door area. Um, to get in there, we're gonna need to light some sconces. But I'm gonna call this an episode. Um, I think we're at a good point here. I'm gonna, uh, actually I'll, I'll, I'll close out here. Uh, yeah, we'll, that's where we'll call it. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.